If you stayed till the end of the last episode, you know we are in a bit of a pickle. We're in a tough spot, and if you skip around, you miss some of these important things, like we are without a quarterback for pretty much the remainder of the season. Desmond Ritter, partial PCL tear. He will miss at least the next seven weeks. I've thrown him on IR. We are without a quarterback, except some of you will remember our backup, Give you a moment to think about it. It is Andy Dalton. And while my confidence in Andy Dalton remains unwavering, uh, I, I don't know if he's going to be the guy to lead us to the playoffs. We're three and four. The NFC South, as you'd expect, is close. The Bucks are one and six, but Panthers four and three, Saints three and three. We are three and four. We are right there. A game this way or that way, and we're leading the division. Have the Giants here in week eight. Panthers in division in week nine. That's going to be a really, really important matchup. And is Andy Dalton the guy that's going to lead us to the playoffs? I don't think so. He's a 67 overall playing down. Accuracy is not great. And his throw power and speed, abysmal. I simply cannot stick with Andy Dalton and expect good results. So with that being said... Week 8, approaching the trade deadline, it's time to make a trade. And the trade that we're going to make is for former top 5 pick in the draft, Trey Lance. In real life, of course, was traded to the Cowboys for essentially next to nothing. We are trading Quez Watkins, who we signed in the offseason, kind of a short-term deal with very little money overall. I just kind of have preferred Rashid Shaheed. So Quez Watkins, especially in an offense where we don't really rely on the receivers, it's more so the tight ends and the running back. Quez Watkins behind Drake London, who continues to frustrate me, but Rashid Shaheed in the mix, of course. Donovan Peoples-Jones, who we signed. As fast as Quez Watkins is, he was kind of the odd man out, in my opinion. And then Puna Ford has just been outsnapped and outplayed by the rookie Kyrie Yankee out of Notre Dame. He's a nice rotational guy, but we don't necessarily need him. And then a fifth round pick in 2026 nets us, of course, Trey Lance. Now, Trey Lance is not the long-term solution, probably. Of course, he is on the Dallas Cowboys in real life, as I mentioned, and he's, you know, unlikely to do much for them. But as you can see, just one year remaining on his deal. So we have him literally just for this season and this run. So we've traded all those players for half a season of Trey Lance, but the ceiling is significantly higher than what we would get with Andy Dalton. He is just 24 years old with a much bigger arm, 91 throw power compared to the 85 of Andy Dalton, better accuracy overall, 87 short, and then significantly better speed. He's got decent traits as well. Ideal decision maker, tight spiral, average sense of pressure. He's charismatic, gotta love that. So I, I think just based on what it would take to acquire Trey Lance, as we found out, it just made the most sense to trade for him. And is he our franchise QB? Is he even going to be on the roster next season? I'm not sure. But I think he gives us a chance to win this season. And that's the move we're making. Better or not, for better or worse, Trey Lance is now going to be our starting quarterback. And the Cardinals, by the way, everyone wanted Kyler Murray. He has a foot fracture. He's going to miss a significant chunk of this next season or this current season. So Kyler Murray was not an option to trade for. And when you look at him attribute wise, he has the same throw power as Trey Lance. His short accuracy is only plus one. Deep is significantly better, like plus five ish, right? And the medium accuracy is like plus three. But is Kyler Murray the guy for all it would take to get him? And we couldn't trade for him anyway. He's injured. But, or was Trey Lance a better decision? He doesn't really look too bad in the game. He really doesn't. Compared to Desmond Ritter, Ritter is more accurate with a bigger arm and more speed, but he's kind of like Desmond Ritter light. The big problem with that is that Desmond Ritter has sucked for us. And now we have Trey Lance. Also, we have more information on some of the draft class. Deion Dobbins from LSU really does remind me quite a bit of Dante Boston from LSU a year ago that we missed out in the draft. B blockhead, A finesse moves, A power moves, B tackle also appears to be a very, very good athlete. 
Deion Dobbins could be what we wanted from Dante Boston last year. It seems to be a pretty good class overall, especially for pass rushers. We talked about Tracy Peel in this season already. North Carolina pass rusher comes from a long line. Lawrence Taylor, Julius Peppers, Robert Quinn. They're way more than you'd expect from what is typically a basketball school. And this draft class overall seems to be fairly stacked. A finesse moves, B power moves, B block shed, and a really, really good athletic profile for the defensive tackle, Felix Borden from Washington. Probably not someone we're going to be able to get, but overall seem to be some incredible players. And I know we don't need tight end, but there are some really good ones. George Cormier from Auburn looks to be a fantastic athlete with very good skills as well. A short route running, A medium route running. Deep route running is A to C. So it could be very, very good. And then Javier Singleton from NC State. North Carolina getting some love here in this draft. Also looks quite good. Amazing athlete. Skills also look fairly good. I know we don't necessarily need a tight end. Obviously, we already have two. But they do look good. I'm going to be tempted. <laughs> we'll see what happens. The Lions franchise was the franchise for drafting safeties and moving them around. Falcons franchise could be the draft or the, the series for drafting tight ends and moving them around. So coach protection for the quarterback was a major issue this past week as you surrendered a high volume of sacks. Where do those struggles start? Well, the quarterback, I don't want to blame the QB and have it be Trey Lance, but it was Desmond Ritter's fault. Ball's going to come out faster or come out, period. You can't be taking these sacks. Those negative plays make drives nearly impossible to sustain. So whether it's dumping it underneath or just chucking it away, the quarterback has to get rid of the ball faster or in general. So with that being said, does that change the game plan this week? So yeah, it does. We're going to shift to the run. And we said that in the last episode. We tried to get the football to Drake London consistently last week to get him superstar development. It didn't happen. I'm just not on the same page with these receivers. I am really not good at getting the ball out uh, to the outside. And I feel like these guys don't create a tremendous amount of separation. And when they do, I don't see it because I'm used to them not being open. But I understand part of it at least is a me problem. But Andy Dalton and a lack of confidence has upset him and resulted in minus five morale. I don't care. Our new quarterback is Trey Lance. We're going to rush for over 125 yards with B. John Robinson. As much as I hate it as a Giants fan, we're going to run the ball down the Giants' throat and we're going to run up the scoreboard. It's B. John Robinson today and we are going to run the damn football. That's what we're doing, and now we're going to get 150 plus rushing yards. Also, I keep moving my phone on my desk, and it sounds like I'm shitting my pants, so um, maybe I am, actually. Maybe that's a good cover. And our scouting national focus is going to be, what, expertise, defensive end, and outside linebacker. I want to know more about these defensive ends. The class looks really, really good. I want to know just how good. So defensive end will be our focus position for this draft. New QB1. Trey Lance, player tags, QB of the future and future starter. Show me something. You know, he's going to have a pretty, I would say, easy task today, which is hand the ball off and dump it down. So if that's all we have to do, I think Trey Lance is going to be able to do it for us. Here is the projected draft at this point. Mock draft number two is Felix Borden going number one overall. Deion Dobbins at two. Now, you know that we have two first round picks. Ours and the Vikings. And we're doing well enough. And so are the Vikings. So we don't pick until 17 right now. As well as 22. So we need the Vikings to start losing some more games. And I'd still want to win. I want the 32nd pick in the draft because I want to be Super Bowl champions here in year two. I saw a comment last episode that kind of said, hey, you know, this might be the first time in one of your series that the team actually has performed worse in season two than season one. And we've had a number of challenges that have kind of gone into that, right? But at the end of the day, we are still three and three here. We're three and four. We're on the, you know, the verge of 500. You know, I think there's no reason as we're going to throw Trey Lance in here, by the way, there's no reason that we can't go on a run and, you know, make the playoffs and get hot. You know, it could have happened last, last season. We lost in the division. I said the championship before. We lost in the divisional to the Eagles. But, you know, I think we easily could have beat them. We had an onside kick get recovered on us. Kind of got unlucky in a lot of ways. But, you know, I, I really think that you know, we're a team capable of success. 
and the Desmond Ritter injury is a, certainly a setback in that, but it's not the end of the world. So let's take a new look at our quarterback or a look at our new quarterback, Trey Lance. We have target passing here. Can you imagine getting a dev trade upgrade in his first practice? I don't know if we're going to keep number 10 on him. It certainly is possible. I don't really think it matters a whole ton. But I'll tell you what, he's throwing the football pretty nice right now. This is a good start. I know it's just practice. I know it's just target passing. But man, if this doesn't look like a franchise quarterback. Look at that ball. Oh my goodness. Double bullseye. Get Desmond Ritter out of here. You know, I'm glad he got injured. Blessing in disguise. Because we found our franchise quarterback. I've seen enough. What, six throws? Maybe not even. That's enough to know. This is the guy. <laughs> this is the guy. 37,000 points or just about. Show me a dev trade upgrade. That was a phenomenal performance from Trey Lance. Nope, just the XP. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start training here. If Trey Lance got injured, how devastating would that be? In practice. Hopefully that does not happen. Defense appears to be healthy, and they are. Still without Jeff Okuda, obviously without Desmond Ritter. That's the whole reason we went out and traded for a quarterback. And also without Cordero Patterson. Patterson doesn't really matter a whole lot. He's a nice player to have, but it doesn't really matter that we don't have him. But I'll tell you what, you know, as much as I'd love for him to be great, Trey Lance is less accurate than Desmond Ritter was, or is, and Desmond Ritter was not accurate. So... We really can't be too crazy today. It's going to have to be a lot of running the ball and a whole lot of checkdowns. And against the Giants, I think that strategy is going to be fairly effective. Yes, they do have Dexter Lawrence, Leonard Williams, a couple of good players on the defensive line, the emergence of Kayvon Thibodeau. But it's raining here in MetLife. That's run the damn football weather. Perfect weather for football. Bobby Okereke, of course, signed from Indianapolis. Eight tackles last week, but he's not going to know what hit him. When Trey Lance walks into MetLife, let's go Falcons. Giants will start with the football, and here we go. Wandell Robinson back to return, and he's going to take this one out as well. And he has space. This is not a good start. Wandale into the open field. Young Way Koo's not going to catch him. The first play of the game, not even from scrimmage, the first play of the game is a Wandale Robinson kickoff return touchdown. Well, well, I wasn't ready for that. Tell you that, that kind of kills a little bit of the momentum that we had or felt like we had. Okay, we're gonna jump in on offense. Wow, here is Rashid Shaheed. Could have more uh, availability on offense as a receiver with the trade of Quez Watkins. And here comes Trey Lance. Not something I ever expected to be saying in this franchise series, but here he is. Has not attempted a pass on the season that may change today. I might run the Arthur Smith offense, and maybe that won't change. He's going to still be at zero attempts. And we actually could run the ball with him. Trey Lance is a bit of an athlete here. Read option could be very interesting. And that's what we're going to do. And Trey Lance keeps it. And Trey Lance with a nice 13-yard pickup on first down. His first play as an Atlanta Falcon. Thought there could have been more opportunity for a huge play on that. The blocks didn't really develop the way I had expected them to. But already, I mean, look at that. It just... Kyle Pitts didn't get to the safety quickly enough. Uh, we should have cut it back right here. But I think Pinnock probably still ends up making the play. I don't know, kind of a tough call. Hindsight, of course, is 2020. Here's Bijan Robinson, and there is Dexter Lawrence into the backfield instantly. Yeah, that's the problem that we're going to face today when running the ball, is that Dexter Lawrence exists, and he's already in the zone. I don't like that at all. Okay, well, yeah, not an ideal start from that perspective, as we're going to run with Trey Lance already. He does have good speed, and Trey Lance is going to find the edge here. Knocked out of bounds by Jenkins, number 69. Not a real guy. You can tell by his weird kind of body shape on the defensive line. Is that Billy Jenkins, the rookie out of Illinois? I believe it is. 
We're gonna run a screen here on third and five. Bijan is open. Bijan with a couple of blocks, makes a guy miss. Bijan upended, but gets 10 yards and a first down as we'll move the chains. Trey Lance's first attempt matches his jersey number. It's a 10 yard pickup. Only three down linemen here. I mean, Kayvon's in a two point stance. We're gonna run the football on that. Tyler Algier picks up five. We'll take that every time, no question. Trey Lance running the Falcons offense here. We don't have to do too much. I said we're going to run the ball heavy, and we should have been doing that the entire time. I don't know why we're getting confused on the identity of this team. This is not Lions franchise where we have a superstar quarterback in Paula Garrison. We can air it out and hit Richie Owens, right? Or, I mean, maybe the best receiver in that series. Probably the best receiver. One of the best receivers in series history, Raphael Wilkinson. It's third and two. Tight end wide open. There's Neil Madsen. He catches the football. Picks up a nice gain to the 25. But my point is, we don't have Dennis Peoples. We have Donovan Peoples, Jones. It's not quite the same. But this is a run-heavy attack. And we're going to run QB draw here. And there is a nice block for Trey Lance. He's going to kind of dive forward, get seven yards. Already three attempts for Trey Lance, but 27 yards. It's clearly working. This is what we needed to do the whole time. Why pass with Desmond Ritter when we can run the football? But of course, now we have Trey Lance. It's working about the same, but Algier is stuffed. Third and four, we're gonna keep the ball on the ground here and Bijan is shut down and there's also an injury. Kyle Pitts holding his midsection on the play. That's not good. And he, oh, I thought he was gonna spike the helmet. Clearly unhappy, clearly something bothering him. Doesn't take a detective to figure that out. So unfortunately, we don't end up getting seven. We decided to keep the ball on the ground with this rain on third and short with an inexperienced quarterback. And the Giants' interior defensive line is going to make plays. Dexter Lawrence is clearly going to be a huge problem for us today. We're going to probably have to run a lot more outside. And it's bruised ribs for Pitts. We're going to bring in Neil Madsen as our primary tight end. That'll give Jonu Smith a few more reps as well. But we're just going to err on the side of caution with Pitts. That probably pushes Rashid Shahid into the slot. So know about those changes before Kyle Pitts retakes the field as we do a much better job of subduing and containing Wondell Robinson on this return. And for the first time today, we'll see Daniel Jones, Danny Dimes, Vanilla Vic. I did create the nickname. Uh, it's been taken and ripped from me so many times, but people always expect me to be mad. They tweet at me, oh, this guy stole your thing. I'm happy about it. Get out there. Use it. That's the whole point of a nickname, right? Nobody owns the rights to it. I mean, I'm happy I came up with it. And originally it was uh, Kyle Laletta in the first Giants franchise. But I'm overjoyed that people are using it and think it's funny and fun. So, why not? Also, Saquon Barkley somebody we're going to have to worry about. Is this slants? It is. And that is a catch by Paris Campbell. Campbell survived a hit and actually, I think, even got more yards as a result. Looked like he might have been going into the ground, and the second hit somehow reinvigorated him, kept him on his feet, and uh, he made a nice play. Oh, this is play action. Allen after Jones, who throws. Ebikati on Waller is a bad matchup. Only results in a three-yard pickup for the G-men. I think blitzing Daniel Jones is going to be the way. I mean, this is a guy who's been historically oblivious to pressure. So what do we want to do? Put pressure on him. And is this play action? It is. Jones goes down the field and completes it. Isaiah Hodgins with the catch. I thought we had pretty good coverage right there. I think what we needed to do with Mike Hughes or Richie Grant was go for the football to knock it down. Not, it was Mike Hughes. Not try to intercept it. We didn't have the angle. That is my fault. Giants with a big play as a result. First and 10 from the 37. Jones and Barkley split offside, and it will, or offset, it will break a tackle and pick up eight or nine, maybe even ten. They're going to call it second in inches, though. RPO, A.J. Terrell right there, but the catch made by Darius Slayton, and now five for five is Daniel Jones to start this game with completions to a number of different receivers. Darren Waller, Isaiah Hodgins, Paris Campbell. Oh, my goodness. And now, of course... Uh, Darius Slayton as Caden Ellis will make a nice tackle and bring down Saquon for a short loss. That's the end of an electric first quarter and not even to mention Wandell Robinson who returned a kick for a touchdown. Every Giants receiver is getting involved here early. 
in some way, shape, or form. The only guy we haven't seen and probably won't see is Jalen Hyatt. That's probably the only one, but every other receiver has been involved in some way. Here's second and 11 for Big Blue, as they are going to run the football, and Barkley going to go ahead and juke out A.J. Terrell and gain a lot of those yards back. It's third and four. How do we contain Daniel Jones? The question everybody wants to know. We're, we're going to play hard flats, and we're going to force Daniel Jones to go down the field a little bit here. And he has receivers open to the outside and plenty of time. Daniel Jones going to lob it up out of bounds and out of the back of the end zone. Way too much time. We've seen what this Giants offensive line is capable of. And the answer is not much. Our defensive line gets stonewalled by about everybody. But that is the way it goes sometimes. And uh, Teddy Bridgewater is the holder for the Giants, by the way. Might see him today if there's an injury to Daniel Jones, and we kind of want there to be. We're going to blitz him a lot. We're going to see if we can get to QB number two. So we got to run away from Dexter Lawrence. Attack pretty much anybody else as we're going to get off play action here. And we're going to go ahead and chuck it down. There's Drake London on the check down and a gain of nine. We got to get Trey Lance on the move. Get him mobile. Make things happen. But above all else, run away from Dexter Lawrence. He's actually... Basically, in a, a play in five technique right now, he is out pretty far. And we're trying to get to the outside, but there's just nowhere to go. Bijan Robinson, four rushes for negative three yards. We're really trying to get him going, but there just has not been the space so far as we're going to go ahead and flip this play. Giants defense going to rotate over, safety going to buzz down, and we are going to try to run the ball in third and three away from Dexter Lawrence, but he makes the play anyway, and the Giants defensive line shed blocks immediately. I'm not really sure what we could do on that play when we're not even running, and our offensive line is just either getting bodied or doing nothing. You can see Matthew Bergeron here combo blocking Dexter Lawrence, but then never getting over to pick up Micah McFadden. So essentially, nobody gets blocked, and there's nowhere to go. Play action. Oh, good coverage that time, Mike Hughes. We went for the football to deflect it rather than go for the interception. And what's annoying there is I wanted my safeties to come up and blitz. But when you press your corners, the safeties drop back. And then the blitz is essentially nullified because they have so many yards to go. As Jones is going to air it out, Darius Slayton with the catch. I mean, what a weird play. I don't know. This game frustrates me to no end. That's a frustrating play to give up. And it's first and 10 for the Giants from the 38. This could be a run. It's actually going to be play action. And we're biting on it consistently as Jones can't connect with the receiver. Just not on the same page there. Looks like Kyrie Yankee had the pressure. But when we blitz, we have to press these corners. Otherwise, it, you're just allowing them to get the quick play. The quick throw off. I mean, what does the blitz do? Makes the quarterback get rid of the football quickly, essentially, right? But when your corners are off, you're allowing that quick throw to happen. Very weird. Here's first and 10 for the Giants. That's a quick play out to the flat. Darren Waller breaks a tackle, gets six. Uh, I would say it's pretty obvious they're going to score here one way or another. So our new goal is to stop them from scoring a touchdown. That's unbelievable that's unbelievable it's an unbelievable play Isaiah Hodgins on like a reverse there jet sweep type thing I, I got distracted looking at too many different things and I felt like we were in a pretty good spot to cover it there was obviously yeah we, this jet sweep there was obviously a lot going on but when the tackle is not made by D'Angelo Malone we're essentially screwed because Mike Hughes over pursues right expecting Isaiah Hodgins to get to the edge he doesn't he goes back inside and then Richie Grant dives arm tackle can't make the tackle and Isaiah Hodgins with just enough speed to get to the end zone it's 17 to 3 Giants this was not the bounce back game I was looking for we've had a couple of really close really fun uh unfortunate losses in recent weeks and we're kind of spiraling uh, spiraling a little bit this was supposed to be a game where we could bounce back and the Giants have totally taken away all ability to run the football. Dexter Lawrence has been a one-man game wrecker on the defensive line, and we might have to pivot. 
because the Giants have full momentum and running the ball consistently at Dexter Lawrence is not working. We have to figure out a plan B, even if that means passes that are like runs, quick passes to Bijan, quick throws underneath, but the Giants are on everything right now. They know about Trey Lance. They know we can't stretch the football down the field, and they are forcing us to try because nothing is open underneath as Trey Lance is pressured. Neil Madsen was supposed to be running a route there and was blocking or chipping for like 20 minutes. So the one guy I wanted to throw the ball to because there was nothing over the middle of the field never really even got into his route. Let's see. One, two, he chips, and then he's stuck, and he's trying to block. It, Dude, just get out into your route. Please, completely screwed us. Third and 10. Forced to throw the football. We're going to run. And we're going to throw. There's Donovan Peoples-Jones as Lance hits him on the run and on the money. Trey Lance scrambling out to his right is something that has worked already today. I wanted to run for it, but Billy Jenkins played the contain fairly well. So we were left with just, all right, lob it up. Hopefully we get the result that we want, and we did. Dexter Lawrence is now off the field. This is what you're going to call your tempo, right? Your no huddle offense. We are not going to give a chance for Dexter Lawrence to get back on the field. We are going to run the football, and we are not going to let them resub in. There's Bijan Robinson. Gets to the outside. Bijan makes somebody miss. A little hesitation and is pushed out of bounds at the seven. That probably would have taken us to the two-minute warning anyway. And I would expect to see Dexter Lawrence back in post-two-minute warning. Maybe not, though. Maybe he got hurt. Maybe he's tired. They got the defensive line rotation going. Either way, now nah, he's back on the field. I didn't want to see him. <laughs> First and goal. I mean, the, the Giants are showing a double mug look. Two in the A-gap. We're going to run the football on it. Dexter Lawrence shoots through. Tries to make a diving attempt to go after Bijan, who ends up getting three. He's just shedding blocks instantly every time. And he's such an incredible player. I'm not upset about it. But it's frustrating. He's completely taking over the game. I mean, can we slide protect to that side? I don't know. We're going to have to snap the ball here. There goes Algier, looking for space, finds number 97. Okay. Ran out of time on that. We were trying to take time off the clock so the Giants can't repossess the football. And look who's back in the zone. I don't know what you do against this. He's just been a menace so far. There he is. I mean, fourth and goal now. <laughs> Timeout, Giants. I don't, I don't know what you can do. I, I, I know we need to pass the football more. I got a game plan coming in, and the game plan is obviously not working because Dexter Lawrence, Dexter Lawrence is completely ruining my game plan. We're going to settle for three. Still very much in the game. Touchdown, two-point conversion, and a field goal will tie it. Right? I think we're down by uh, 11. So 31 seconds to play defense or special teams. Don't allow Wandale to take another one back. And I think we're still going to be in a fine spot. Daniel Jones taking off. Slides in front of Deshaun Humphreys. And the Giants will use their final timeout. They've made it all the way up to midfield. But they pretty much have to get the ball out of bounds or into the end zone. Because one play over the middle. I don't think they're going to have the time. Daniel Jones under pressure and gets rid of it. 13 seconds. They're not in field goal range yet. Just play the outside. Tackle them in front of you. They will not have enough time. Play outside, and I did not commit to the pass there. We're dropping back with Frankie Louvre. We're going to send somebody after Daniel Jones. Somebody get to him, and it's another throw away. And on fourth and sixth, the Giants, I assume, will punt. Good defensive stand from us. Not really going to have any time to work with, but that's okay. I think we're just going to go into the halftime, down 17-6 to six with the football. We even try read option. Is that stupid? It probably is. We'll see what happens. Here's Bijan. All right. He gets a couple extra yards, but nothing crazy. Down in this game, but not out, obviously. Plenty of time left. We've really struggled to move the ball on offense because of 97. We're going to run outside now. And what do you do against Daniel Jones? I don't know. I feel like it's been working mainly. They haven't been that good. Defend the medium pass, potentially. That... 
affects short coverage, which I don't love. But here we go. Third quarter, offense takes the field first. No turnovers, get points up of any kind. A field goal is not the worst thing. A touchdown would be preferred. Okay, the second half needs to be better than the first. And it's going to be just getting the football as far away from Dexter Lawrence as humanly possible. Do not just put it anywhere near 97. Now, we're running read option on this play. I'm kind of worried about the slot corner. We'll see what happens. We're actually going to run up the middle. There's Bijan with speed and a burst to the outside. And Dexter Lawrence is making the tackle near midfield. How is he even possibly in that play? How could Dexter Lawrence make the tackle? It says he only has three. I don't even believe that. Dude, he's running at like 100 miles per hour. Now, Kyle Pitts is back on the field, though. So that's an encouraging sight. We're going to find him. And he actually will make a catch in traffic there. Mike McFadden was kind of all over him. We should have been a little bit more patient. But we got rid of the football very quickly. As I will try to, I think, work this left side of the field. I know the reads to the right. I don't really want to do that. Uh, I'm not really finding what I want. Thibodeau in pursuit. And we are going to get sacked, kind of. Third and 11. Was it, was it second and 10? No, we, we just lost like six or seven yards. We need to throw that football away. That's no good. They're showing double A gap pressure. I still doubt that they actually send it. It's al almost always a bluff as we're going to throw for the tight end. Madsen, and he survives contact. Hit from both sides and makes a really nice catch in traffic. And he's going to let the Giants DBs know about it. His second catch, 39 yards receiving for him. And Trey Lance with a gotta have it throw. And Madsen with a great catch. We've seen that be dropped a couple times by receivers this year. Not this time from Neil Madsen, the rookie out of Utah. The pick was hated by the fans. And he's proving them wrong, hopefully. Little by little. And throw it out of the back of the end zone. That's a throwaway, by the way. That's insane that that was that close. Second and ten. Who wants to get open? How about right over the middle to DPJ who makes me want to get KIA I don't know dude I'm how do you drop that how do you drop that pass brutal third and ten I like Bijan I actually like stepping up more with Trey Lance there he goes and Trey Lance diving fumbles the football I didn't want to dive when I tap it it's this weird little dive I'm like alright we gotta hold it down then Clearly, that doesn't work either. Trey Lance has put the football on the ground after a promising drive and a big play. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? They change the dive button every year. Sometimes it's hold it down. Sometimes it's tap it. And apparently this year, it's neither. For someone whose job it is, I, I probably should have a better idea of what the actual controls are. But as I say all the time, I only played this game on camera. So, I don't have too many reps and... It comes back to bite me right there. Throw over the middle. Humphreys diving, can't get him. And the Giants get out of the back of their own end zone with a big play. I mean, that's just such a frustrating sequence. It's a turnover that shouldn't have happened. And the Giants are now in position to extend their lead and win this football game easily. As Jones finds Barkley, it's another nice play. Saquon's in the zone. I think only a TFL will get him out of the zone. I think he has first one free. So if he gets into the open field, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. So we have to try and uh, not have that happen. A TFL is going to be super important. But those can be tough to get, especially on a back with first one free. As Saquon showcases power this time. And kind of pushes through a couple of would-be tacklers. Gets a couple of extra yards. And it's third down and four. We're going to show a man look. And we're going to be in man coverage on Saquon Barkley. It's going to be a screen. We're all over it. Pass tipped up into the air. But Humphreys alertly pushes Barkley to the ground. And then helps him up. What a nice guy. And then Ben puts him back down again. D-Hump. What are you doing? I like it. Get in his head. Get the mental advantage. Play it cerebrally. We got the football back. And we're going to be pinned. On our own too. But um... Other than not getting points of any kind, 
the frustrating turnover doesn't really come back to bite us too much unless we get safety which we got to be really aware of with Dexter Lawrence there but we get out of our, our own end zone a little bit here to the eight nice game and Dexter Lawrence actually injured on the play this might be the best thing that has ever happened to us Dexter Lawrence moving to the sideline we have to take advantage of this I know this is not the way you want to do it with an injury, but I'll tell you what, I don't care how it happens. We needed to get 97 just to stop wrecking our entire game, and that's what's going to happen right now. He's probably going to miss this drive. We have to take advantage. This needs to be a touchdown. It needs to be the Bijan Robinson show. Get him going. Algier as well, whatever. I'm going to show read option here. And Trey Lance wrapped up by Thibodeau. He just managed to play everything there. Okay. Oh, and Bichon's actually in the zone as well. First one free activated. We got to use that. We got to use that. Oh, we're going to get sacked. Third and 20. All right. No Dexter Lawrence, no problem. And Lance looks to be hurt on the play. Thankfully, that's the end of the third quarter. Hopefully, nothing serious. Hopefully, we see him for the fourth. But third and 20 is a really tough spot to be in. We have nine minutes to make something happen. Trey Lance is in. London being doubled. I have no idea why that would be. They clearly have not seen the game tape. And we're going to try to get Bijan into space. This is just going to be probably a deep shot of some kind. We're going to find Kyle Pitts threaded beautifully over the middle by Trey Lance. That may be the first catch of the game, maybe second for Kyle Pitts. But this one was huge. Pretty much impossible down in distance, and we end up converting. Did not expect it. I'm not mad about it. And still no Dexter Lawrence. Let's get Bijan a carry. And he breaks a tackle, but doesn't really find much. We got to get Trey Lance moving. And we're going to run. There's Bijan. You got to hit him, Trey. There's Bijan with the catch. Nice enough throw from Trey Lance. Not really a super accurate pass there, according to the game. But... It goes exactly where it needs to be for Bijan to at least catch the ball and move the chains. His third catch of the game. Second and 10. Oh, Giants sent heat. Everyone crashed down. And now it's third and 11. I know the run on second and long. I always advocate against it, and here I am doing it. And not only does it not work, it gets Bijan out of the zone and off the field for another critical down in distance. And my receivers don't know the play. Neil Madsen didn't hear the adjustment the first time. Had to run it a second time, and we nearly throw an interception throwing out of a sack. Okay, well, not the result we wanted, but we're going to bring out Young Wei Koo. We need you to drill it. Got that kicker ability on him. Here is the kick. It is wide left. That meter went down way faster than I was expecting. It's another drive without points. I Dude, I don't know, man. It's just one of those games for me. One of those games, we've had opportunities and we keep throwing them away. Andrew Thomas actually injured on that last play, running into the locker room. He might be done for this game. We need to be able to take advantage of it. Throwing over the middle, how is no one on Isaiah Hodgins? In man coverage. Oh my God. Throwing deep. Darren Waller thankfully does not beat Mike Hughes to the spot. We need a turnover. Get to Daniel Jones. Throwing to the end zone, Paris Campbell touchdown. I mean, nobody came to play today. Not the interior of my offensive line, not my defense. Daniel Jones finds Paris Campbell in the end zone. Had all day to throw, obviously, and a ton of space to throw it into is Paris Campbell. Wide open. It's 24 to 6 Giants. Okay. Not what we wanted today, that's for sure. Giants with complete momentum here. They can see the primary routes via coach cam. Does that mean they're going to be able to read this screen? Not all that well. Look at the pancake there. Oh, my goodness. Bijan ends up getting eight. We have to play with some sense of urgency here, though. Down 24 to six at this point in the game. Less than five minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Let's check it down to Bijan. It's not there. And another injury to the Giants. Kayvon Thibodeau hurt this time. Andrew Thomas, Kayvon Thibodeau, Dexter Lawrence. Don't accuse me of bounty gate or anything, but it's all of their top players who are getting injured right now. Check down to Bijan on third and two. They're going to give it to us. 
I know we're being really conservative. I just don't know how much we can trust Trey Lance to throw the ball down the field. He's made a number of nice throws already today. And then some not so great ones. There's Kyle Pitts. Get by him. Kyle Pitts. Nice catch sideline. Did he get out of bounds? I think so. That clock's going to stop momentarily at least. And it will stop. I didn't know if he got out of bounds or not. And he's actually in the zone. Let's try to get him some space. There's Kyle Pitts. And there he goes. Pitts again. Not getting to the sideline. We're going to get into the hurry up. We need to make this. Uh, we need to get a touchdown here, essentially. It's just, it's going to be tough to win this game, obviously. But we need to, we need to do something quick. That's going to be intercepted. Uh, poor accuracy on a bullet pass going for Tyler Algier. And that is going to be the game. Okereke actually going to house this. And the Giants will end up with the win one way or another. That's what you call the dagger as Trey Lance is intercepted for six. Um, wildly inaccurate pass. Probably wasn't the best move to throw that either way. There were better options. Even Drake London would have been a better option. But uh, the pass was obviously nowhere even close. So it didn't especially matter. And... Um, I, it, probably not going to win that game anyway, unfortunately. You know, it's funny. I do actually think Trey Lance has played fairly well as Lance is going to get sacked. Um, but just not well enough, obviously. Two turnovers certainly hurt uh, his production today. This was just... It was it was a tough game. And they're all over the screen. Bichon tackled for a loss. Yeah, this was not a fun game to play in the rain. And Lance is sacked again. Well, we were doing pretty well at avoiding sacks, but uh, yeah, when we're forced when we're forced to throw the ball and they can just pin their ears back and fly at the QB, that's gonna happen. Kyrie Yankee with a TFL, you know, we'll call a timeout, get the football back for one more try. Obviously, can't win the game, but maybe we can get something going. I mean, there's there's no point to call a timeout in that spot. It's Stupid. Best hope is that Kyle Pitts can somehow get into uh, single coverage. And he does, and he can't catch the football even with that X factor. So this will be the final play of the game. I'm going to run outside here with B. John Robinson and not get a block from Madsen. So that is your ball game. The Giants, I mean, absolutely massacre us. You got to remember this team is not quite as bad as the one we're seeing in real life in 2023. Uh, but they are not good enough to do that to us. We just didn't have it today. Uh, I thought our defense played really badly. And we obviously really struggled on offense, but it's a couple big turnovers that crushed us. I think the fumble from Trey Lance when I dove by accident was, I think, a real difference in this ball game because if that doesn't happen, who knows? Lance goes 16 for 24 in his Falcons debut, 221, worth no touchdowns and an interception. Could have been better, could have been worse. Rushing... Struggled to get it going with Bijan until a couple runs there at the end. Ended up only breaking two tackles. Trey Lance goes for 32, so uh, we definitely didn't hit the mark that we wanted to. Trey Lance makes this about 112 plus Algier, a little over 120, but did not get to 125 and certainly not 150. Bijan with six catches for 41 yards, five for 77 for Pitts. A big drop by DPJ early as well. Did have one catch for 49 yards. And then defensively, uh, Dexter Lawrence was unbelievable. Had five tackles for loss. Sorry, Caden Ellis. Okereke, three TFLs. Thibodeau, three TFLs. I mean, the Giants overall had double-digit tackles for loss today and a handful of sacks as well. So this was just a really, really tough game. And sometimes you have those. You know, I think the bottom line was that we were put in a tremendously difficult position today. And we obviously didn't get the results we wanted. Anytime you get an injury to your starting quarterback, you're going to be in trouble, even when he's not great. The alternative usually isn't better. Although, I will say, uh, I was encouraged by what I saw from Trey Lance. I think it could have been a whole lot worse. And I don't think it would have been too much better with Desmond Ritter. But yeah, the conditions were really tough. 
And now all offensive linemen will have minus three run block power and finesse uh, for the next game. So when your run block power and finesse already bad, having any type of... Uh, <laughs> Any type of downgrade, really not going to help you. Giants do have the number three defense, though. So, I mean, we played a good team. We played a good team, and their offense was good. I mean, they're four and three, but they are obviously much better than that. We're going to bounce back next week on the road against the Panthers. Uh, the Giants were clearly uh, too challenging for us. The Panthers, I think it's going to be a little bit of a different story. Now, they're very good against the run. So we might have to pivot, and then we're going to have to rely on Trey Lance to throw the ball down the field a little bit. That could certainly happen, but that's not going to be outside to our receivers. It's going to be Kyle Pitts and Neil Madsen, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.